Welcome back to the next video, the next part of this tutorial. I'm back and wow, that was good. Wow, uh, lunch was excellent today. I can tell you that much, but let's concentrate on the simulations now. Okay, so in the last video we did this simulation with a core smash which finished with a couple of minutes. As you see we injected water into the domain and then water filled up the geometry up to a certain degree. Good now, but we saw the problems with numerical diffusion as you see here and especially at the beginning believe there you see it now yes so in these these regions what can we do we can go back and refine the mesh we can do that here so we could use for example 40 40 60 or here we can just use one 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 and here also one this is a possibility and then go back to mesh then Execute the commands rm minus r, constant poly mesh, block mesh, snappy hex mesh minus o override, and then copy it to the case folder. Another possibility is what I wrote you here. So we already copied the mesh, so we can jump. Uh, we can jump over this and then execute the command refine mesh minus override, which will cut every cell in the center in the X, in the Y and the Z direction, thus creating instead of one cell, eight cells and increase the level of refinement by one. The point is then we have to um, replace alpha.water, which changed now because we use set fields if you take a look at it we now have a list of ones and zeros which represents the value of alpha in the individual cells so we have to replace that with the original version and then execute set fields for the uh, fine mesh and then execute interval this is a possibility let's just do that but as I mentioned, now we have this higher level of folder, the filling of bank, and now we can do our parameter studies. So if you want to redo the mesh uh, in the mesh folder, then just make a copy of that and then say that's mesh fine or finer mesh, whatever you want to call it. Or what I will now do, I will make a copy of case. And we really should have done this before, but Oh well, we need now make a copy of that. And maybe if I go back to here, now you see we have four folders here. Now it's, it's copying all the files and now we're working on the Windows file system. So maybe that's also why so slow because now we're uh, copying all the results, but now we have case cores as a backup. Now we can go into case and then remove remove the, res, uh, the time directories and now we can execute the command. So we already have the mesh, the poly mesh folder from mesh and now we execute refine mesh minus Overwrite. Enter. What's happening now? 3D case refining all directions. Okay, so and if I now executed set fields here, now I'd get a error message. In alpha we have 8160 entries, but the mesh has now 65,000 cells, over 65,000 cells. This is why we have to now replace alpha voter with alpha.org but before we moved it out of zero because parallel had a problem with alpha.org so let's just copy alpha.org and replace alpha.water 
So if I go back now to alpha.water and then again, now we have the, the original version. Okay, very good. Now we can execute set fields. Exactly. And now what I will do, I just, because now we will lose the time steps because we deleted them, I will just open up case course. Just like that. And then reorganize a little bit. 0 0.5, very good at the beginning. And then this was blue. Good, then, and I, I don't like this feature with the zero time. Okay, now we have it. Okay, so we, this is now the course mesh. Case course, yes. So I will rename can you rename it? Create custom field. Can you rename it with? Yes. Okay, so this is course. And now I will do case and case dynamic. I will do a second case for later simulation with the dynamic mesh. But now case is our final mesh. And I want to open up case foam.foam and this one. Very good. That's more than enough. Because what I wanted to show you is now skip zero, apply and the mesh. So I click this away and now you see we have eight cells over our pipe and we have the correct initial water level. Very good. So now we could just go through. Ah, maybe let's re refresh it. And now we have a list of 65,280 entries in our alpha.water. We do not want to change anything. So what we could do now is just enter Interphone, but we could also run a parallel simulation. And now is a difference between, between Ubuntu and Windows 10, because I am currently using, as you saw here, version 17.06. And I can just enter Interform, this would run through, but with, okay, let's just copy decompose bar. And let's just, no, that's not what I wanted. Decompose bar, enter, this will, I'm in the wrong folder. Now decompose bar, and this creates now the processor folders as it should. As you see now here, but now we have to start the simulation as parallel. And for that, we should start Interform uh, with the minus parallel flag. And we organize the communication between the different CPUs with the MPI run. And we, we have four processes. This is by a minus NP4. And we write it into a log file. But if I now copy this, into here what do we get now exactly we are getting an error message either that or another mpi error message there seems to be some kind of problem with version 7006 in windows 10 i have no idea why this happens maybe you guys figured out this problem i couldn't so if you have a solution for that problem in windows 10 then please comment below and I will uh, create a, an update video just uh, regarding this problem in Windows 10 with 17.06. This is something to do with MPI run and how the PStream library is compiled. 
If we don't find the problem within the next couple of weeks, I will contact OpenCFD and ask them about this. So, but in Ubuntu, this should not be a problem. You can just execute NPRN and now you can just lean back and wait for the results. So now what I will do, I will execute Interform in on a single processor and then wait for the simulation to finish. And this is what I meant when I uh, when I talked about uh, the installation of Windows 10. That it is a very good idea for case setup. As you saw, we set up now an open form case, actually two open form cases from uh, uh, in in Windows 10. But running your simulations is not the best idea, and uh, it seems to be a little bit s slower than the Ubuntu version. So for case setup, this is perfect. This is what I was talking about. At this place, at this point, I would now go and copy the case file to a workstation, to a server, to a cluster, even maybe even into the cloud and run the simulation there, copy it back and open up the results here in Paraview. You can decide you can wait for the open form simulations in Windows 10, of course, if you don't have the possibility, but I would advise you to have a second PC where you have a server version of Linux. This is the best idea because then it's even faster. You don't have a lot of background processes there and then set up your cases. Feel free to set up your cases in Windows 10. It's perfect for that, but then run your simulations on a Linux. PC or cluster. Okay, so let's wait for the simulation to finish and I will come back with, I will stop recording now and come back once the simulation is finished. Okay, the simulation finished and I am back. As you see, we reach time equals five. And you see that the time step did change according to the flow, according to the Kuro condition. We solved the simulation, the pressure equation three times. We corrected twice for the alpha equation. And now we are going to evaluate the results. So I will call this now. Well, let me let wait. Let's wait. I will call this now fine. Enter, and I will also create now a clip so we can compare the coarse and the fine mesh. So let's give this another color. Let's make it orange. Okay, so now we have the two results on top of each other. So maybe it's a good idea to move the second one, maybe in the X direction. You have to click this and then translate it, for example, I don't know, maybe by 1.1. Maybe that's a good idea. Let's see if it is really. And now let's start. The video, what's happening now? Fine, maybe refresh it one more time. And now let's start the video. Yes, and now we see the difference between a fine and a coarse mesh. Yes, we capture more features here, as you see. And this is what I would expect from a finer mesh. So do, you do see that there is a difference between a coarse and a fine mesh and please feel free to f uh, refine it even further. As you see on my Windows 10 laptop, this is just my personal laptop with an i5 processor on it. it on one core, it finished in 1,000, 
1300 seconds so it took a while on a pc with multiple cores and on ubuntu it will be faster but you see now we are we finished we filled up the volume with our liquid so this is our fine mesh you can even um, further analyze this with slices or as as you want now what i want to show you is the dynamic mesh case and let's go into dynamic and now as you see we had two files here dynamic mesh static and dynamic mesh ref refine and dynamic mesh static is nothing else as we had not here but here in dynamic mesh dict a static mesh so nothing changes Okay, I'm sorry, and dynamic mesh dict dynamic or refine is a different dictionary where we do have a dynamic refinement, uh, refinement uh, defined. And how do you do that? You replace the, the dynamic mesh dict in constant with this file. And what will this do? This will search, this will refine the mesh after 10 time steps you can change it to one so it will do every time step we will do every 10th time step and it will look for the alpha dot water field so if you're using oil and you define in transfer properties oil then you will have to change this to alpha dot oil but what will this do it will search for cells which have an alpha value between 0 0.01 and 0 0.99 and refine those cells so along the flow front we will have finer cells so we will go for the coarse mesh and then refine the mesh along the flow front so where we have the discontinuity between the liquid water and the, the the air and if it will unrefine everything between below 10 so it this means it will unrefine the cells if we have the alpha value of over 0 0.99 so one so everywhere where we really have only liquid or below 0 0.01 where we only have air and then we have uh we will have one cell between the layers between the refinement levels and we will only refine once we could he enter here two then we would have two refinement levels but this would take too long for this tutorial but feel free to experiment with this value but take care because if you enter here again a two um, a high number then you then the simulation will refine 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 fill up your ram and then uh, there is the possibility that your pc your laptop will crash you can prohibit it with the max cell value again this is an estimation and this will then stop refining after you reach approximately for example in this case two million cells and then there are some other entries which are um, more advanced entries but these are the most important values so you can choose uh, after which time step after for example 10 time steps you want to refine that you want to refine according to the alpha fields for example if you have a compressible flow you want to capture uh, shocks then you can enter here for example the pressure field so you have a pressure gradient which is defining or a pressure field which is defining and then along the shock you want a fine refinement you can use it for that for example but what i want to mention here that this is only a good idea in certain cases for example here this might not be the best idea because here you do especially at the beginning most of the geometry is filled especially here at this stage most of the geometry is filled with the flow fronts so you will refine everywhere 
or 80% of the cells. And you don't, uh, don't forget that although you still use the coarse mesh in certain regions, you need calculation time for the refinement and the unrefinement. So you have to really check if the dynamic mesh really makes sense for your case. And in this case, this will not be a lot faster than just using a, a finer mesh. But I want to show you how it works. So this is these are the entries that you use. And what we do, we just copy this dynamic refine into constant dynamic mesh dict. And don't forget that these entries are for the fine case. So we can close them. And if I just open up now, the entries now, then here now we have for the dynamic case, we have now the correct dynamic mesh ticked. We still have to do a couple of things. We have to remove the fine mesh because we want to use the coarse mesh and we have to replace the alpha field with the original one and now let's take a look so for the dynamic mesh we already copied the coarse mesh we replaced alpha water we also replaced dynamic mesh dict and now for that we have to Um, remove if we have it the refinement history in constant poly mesh if you find it in your case then remove it we don't have it in this case so we should be good now we can set the fields for the coarse mesh and now we can, if you are running this on Ubuntu, then just feel free to decompose par and then run the simulation in parallel. But watch out, in this case we have to start a different solver, which is called interdime foam, interdynamic mesh foam. So copy this into the terminal in Ubuntu and then just start your simulation. In this case, I will not do that, I have to run it in, in a single core enter dime and then I will run the simulation like this log enter dime and now as you see let's search for a time step where we refine I'm not seeing it yet yes now did you see that there we refined it here you see selected 162 cells out of 13,200 and we refined these 13,228 to 14,362 cells and of course yeah that this is uh, warning you can ignore it for this tutorial very good so let's wait until this simulation finishes let's see if it is faster or slower than the fine mesh and at this point I will stop recording because the video is already this part of the tutorial is already long the video is already long plus although the lunch was very good what do you need after a very good lunch? Yes, a cup, coffee. So I will go now and make myself a coffee. So with this, I would like to thank you for watching and listening. I hope that you learned something and I hope to see you in the next video.